Welcome back and I've got another really lovely experiment and quite an old one to show you today. What we're going to look at is how charges spread out on isolated conductors. So I was rooting through the cupboards here at school um, looking at old pieces of apparatus and I came across this ball on a stand and these two sort of hollow hemispheres and um, I don't think they've been used for, well they've certainly not been used in my time here and they've probably not been used for 20, 30, maybe 40 years before that. So I wonder if anyone knows what they are. Well I'm going to show you what they are today. So back in the day, this was a piece of apparatus that all schools had, and I think it's been relegated to the cupboard of electrostatics equipment that no one uses anymore. And um, I'll be totally honest with you, I don't actually know what it's called. Um, I've done quite a bit of sort of uh, looking up and trying to find out what the apparatus was named, and I'm finding three different answers. I've always known it as a Coulomb sphere, um, some of the books call it the Cavendish sphere, though I think that's a slightly different experiment. And uh, one of the best uh, references I found called it Biosphere, as in the Biosavart law. So um, take your pick, but should we go for Biosphere, uh, which looks at the work that Coulomb and Cavendish did on electrostatics. So what I'm going to do now is show you how it works and what it shows us about the nature of charges on isolated conductors. So we've got our BO's apparatus, we call it that, and I've got two other pieces of kit here. Um, here's my, or at least the school's, Wimshurst machine, which I'm going to use to charge up this sphere. And then to detect that charge, I've got a gold leaf electroscope that will tell me whether it's charged or not. Uh, if you're a bit unsure about how the Wimshurst machine works, well, I've done another video on that. And I've also got a video on the gold leaf electroscope. So um, do look at that one if you're not sure how this shows whether there's charge present on an object or not. So let's get started. So let's charge up this sphere. So we'll get the Wimshurst machine going. And there are the sparks. And I'll just touch the metal sphere onto here. And that should have charged it up. And what I'll do now is I'll touch the metal sphere onto the electroscope. So let's charge up the metal sphere again. So I'll get the Wimshurst machine going. There we go. And I'll touch the metal sphere on there, get it charged up. And then this time, I'll get the two metal hemispheres, put it over the sphere, touch them. I'm not touching the metal hemispheres, that's important, I'm on the isolated parts here. And now what we'll do is we'll bring this up to the electroscope and see if there's any charge on it. So let's bring it up to the electroscope and I hope you can see no charge at all. So the final thing we've got to do is say, well, where is this charge gone? If I haven't touched it, if it was all isolated, it must have gone somewhere. And the key to demonstrating that is charge up the metal sphere again. So there we go. There's the Wimshurst machine. Put the two metal hemispheres onto the sphere. Take them away. And now what I'm going to do is touch each of these on the electroscope and show you where the charge has gone. Mm. 
So I appreciate that the rise of the leaf there was not very large when I touched the hemisphere onto it. Um, it's not an easy experiment to really set up and do this, but at least it shows that the charge has transferred from the ball onto the hemispheres. So now for a bit of an explanation, and this is really quite interesting. The metal sphere here is isolated, so it's on an insulating stand. And when I touch it onto the Wimshurst machine's uh, laden jars, which store charge, I charge up that sphere and the charge stays on the sphere. Shall we say it's gained electrons, so it's become negative. So it's hardly surprising that when we bring it next to the electroscope, the electroscope says, this is charged up. There's a presence of charge on this. And that charge will remain there for good uh, unless it slowly seeps away um, if it's not a perfect insulating stand. The next thing is we took these uh, hemispheres and they're neutral. Um, I'm touching them at the moment, but they're also on insulated holders. And when I put them around the sphere on the stand, the charge transfers to these hemispheres. So the charge is completely lost from this sphere and now resides on these hemispheres, which is why when we brought them close to the electroscope, we saw the leaf rise. So, final bit I need to explain is why does the charge go from here onto the hemispheres? Or more importantly, what was this apparatus designed to teach students? So, what can we learn about the nature of charge on isolated metal objects from this? Well, when we charged up this sphere and then took the neutral hemispheres and put them over the sphere, something strange happened. You'd expect the charge to spread out over these metal objects. But what it does instead is it goes completely onto the hemispheres. And what this shows is there can't be any net charge inside a closed conductor. So here's our closed conductor and there can't be any net charge inside it. So here's the charge on the sphere and as soon as we close it inside a closed conductor that charge will all go to the outside edge of these hemispheres and it leaves this sphere here neutral. So I do hope you enjoyed that experiment. It's quite an interesting one, but a really ancient one too. And I'm glad we could get this old apparatus out of the cupboard, give it a dusting down and use it again. Uh, maybe the first time it's been used in 80 years. Anyway, I'll be making another video soon and I look forward to seeing you then.